are so excited to have you here for our next presentation, the Buy Better Revolution Information Update. Giving the update is Mr. Edward J. Gibbons, the Director of the Contracting and Procurement Modernization Tax Force. He is leading an integrated team of contracting professionals, program managers, and operational customers focused on executing the Coast Guard's Buy Better Revolution. The Buy Better Revolution will modernize how the contracting and procurement enterprise does business, making support systems easier for customers, making the Coast Guard an employer of choice for contracting and procurement professionals, and providing the tools and programs needed to continually improve the life cycle of contracting and procurement activities. Following the brief, uh, Mr. Gibbons will be taking questions from the audience, so please stick around. Mr. Gibbons. Thank you. So thanks, thanks for showing up, and uh, I'm told to hold the mic close so everyone can hear me. And I know I've attended a few of these, and it gets pretty loud, just right around the mid spot of the blue carpet right there. So again, I'm Ed Gibbons. I am uh, leading a task force. Uh, our task force uh, is made up of, of uh, right now, over 300 people have participated in our Buy Better Revolution. And we are looking at all the Coast Guard uh, contracting and procurement uh, activities uh, in the enterprise to improve our capabilities. So what are we trying, so what are we, right? So we, we are really a modernization initiative in the, uh, in the uh, tradition of Coast Guard modernization that started back under Admiral Allen uh, 15 years ago. We are, we are implementing the Coast Guard business model and we're trying to really focus on contracting and procurement capabilities because, frankly, the uh, you know the uh, environment that we're operating in, the the systems we're supporting are more complicated. They're more demanding. Demands on the Coast Guard. You heard a comment on today. The the uh, the missions and the uh, the relevance of the Coast Guard has never been greater. So we have to keep pace with that uh, in delivering uh, support to our systems. And you can see we're trying to trying to do this at the same time as we're trying to let our operators operate and provide them the support they need. The uh, you can see we have four characteristics we're trying to achieve as well. Uh, have a customer centric approach. Uh, implement next generation technology. And clear accountability and authority, and create workplace of choice for our workforce. So again, we're aligned with the Coast Guard strategy, and we're aligned as well with the DCMS uh, Mission Support Action Plan. So we're trying to, uh, as we implement these uh, uh, these initiatives, we're also trying to be uh, trying to in ensure that we're responsive and innovative and integrated as we as we do this. So one of the one of the uh, Things of note here with our contract and procurement uh, workforce is that it's a highly uh, specialized, particularly on the civilian side. The 1102 series is uh, it's very specialized, very highly mobile. So, particularly in the DC area, that the folks are able to. Uh, there's a lot of job opportunities, so we have a lot of the workforce is very mobile, and they come to the Coast Guard and leave the Coast Guard. Uh, unlike other particular series in the civilian workforce, so. In a, in a way, you can actually look at a civilian workforce. You can manage it almost like it's a it's a, a military workforce. They're very specialized. You can move them around. And uh, in some places, we have folks who are here for the career, but then other folks are kind of coming and going. So when we talk about the, the talent management tra uh, task force that's out there as well, uh, this particular workforce is a really good fit for all the initiatives we're talking about. Uh, so our case for change, we, we have two primary uh, prime movers here. One is that we uh, are uh, we, we need to we need to deliver the mission with our contracting. Every time we need to obtain goods and services that we're not doing organically, we need to do that better. We need to make uh, uh, we need to be more integrated with the mission. We've heard that loudly uh, and clearly from our operational commanders, and also the workforce. Our workforce is under a lot of stress. Uh, we, we do more work than, you know, our, uh, our contracting actions per person is at least twice uh, that of any other agency. 
uh, in DHS. So we're working harder, not smarter, and the impact of that uh, on our workforce is uh, tremendous. We also have a lot of different different demands on them. We've implemented a, a, a we have a lot of different IT systems. It's, it's just a challenge for our folks in many different ways. So we have to address that to make this a workplace of choice. So again, this is what we're trying to achieve. Uh, the customer-centric approach, the uh, try to try to get some uh, get our data analytics going and, and deliver the tools we need. Um, really take a look at you know our organiz our governance, our organizational design, and also create that work workplace of choice. So how are we doing this, right? So is, we basically have we so the uh, the uh, uh, mission uh, DC. Deputy Commandant for Mission Support before Admiral Thomas uh, commissioned a study. They came back with 14, an acquisition study, came back with 14 recommendations. The consultant group did that. And our task force is trying to implement that. Uh, and what we've done is we bucketed those 14 recommendations and added to them, but they fall in these general areas. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to implement uh, these changes and analyze and conduct an analysis of all these recommendations through uh, an agile project management approach. So we have four lines of effort, workforce, policy and process, governance, and data analytics. And each of these are led by what we call a leadership team. There's four teams, so we call them the quad teams. Uh, there's 15 stakeholders, senior stakeholders in the organization on each team, and they are overseeing a series of agile teams uh, which are chunking out different subject matters and, and uh, deriving different courses of action that we can do to, to address in each of these. So as a result, we have we have those 15 folks in each team and they are they are with the project for the whole year and uh, they uh, uh, own the strategy for each of these lines of effort for the workforce and, and whatnot. So that's you can see it's a it's a pretty broad effort. We have a lot of great contributors to it. So just this is an eye chart, and I'm sorry, but just to show what we are, uh, how how complex and broad this is, we have uh, these are all the different sprints. So we're using Scrum from Agile Project Management as our sort of basis, and these are all the different sprints we're undertaking in each swim lane line of effort. And you can see how uh, how uh, uh, I guess interdependent it is. You can see a lot of crossover. We try to highlight that with the color coding. But we've learned quickly that a policy change drives a workforce change and vice versa and a governance change. Who's doing the work, how we're doing the work, where are the decision rights, all of those things. Everything to the right, so we're on, the, we're on number six now, but everything to the right. We have changed in, in, because Agile Project Management, what, we, what, we, what are the characteristics of Agile Project Management? One of those is you don't know, you accept the fact you don't know your requirements, you learn as you go. So all the topics to the right, they still change. We're changing the names uh, every day, and we're refocusing to try and get the work done. But we're, at the end of May, we're pencils down, and we're going to start writing our recommendations uh, for our blueprint. We're going to deliver, we're going to deliver a blueprint for change, uh, which is the common Coast Guard change management document, and we're, uh, we're going to deliver that here in the fourth quarter. Uh, and then, but we're trying to take action early, and we have pushed off uh, a lot of the different policy owners have made changes based on our work with our, our task force already. Uh, and then we are going to have an implementation office take over uh, this summer, and we're trying to create that right now as well to implement the, 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 uh, the task force. So one of the, one of the reasons we, we wanted to, to talk here is because one of the one of the things we're doing right now, and I didn't point it out, I should have, but one sprint that's coming up is our supplier management sprint, uh, and, and coming to an industry show like this and and uh, and talking to folks, uh, uh, what we're trying to do is understand what it's like to do business with the Coast Guard. So uh, these are some points we have, uh, the questions we have, or an understanding of where we are, the uh, you know the role of our relationships with. The, it, with industry uh, is really critical in doing market research, understanding what's out there, and it, we hear a lot of criticism from uh, from industry. We really don't know what, know what we're asking for a lot of times. So as we we spend a lot of time, we've spent a lot of time 
understanding that we really don't do our requirements packages all that well. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that we, you know, we, all of our SMEs are SMEs on what we have, not on what we need to have. Uh, and they're the folks who are writing the technical requirements to lead So what's the organization that can be, that can create that change when we ask for, uh, for new capabilities? So uh, a lot of that's just relationship and a lot of that's just uh, comfort level with uh, talking to industry and we've had, we've had a lot of, I think, uh, barriers to that, they were self-imposed, uh, but we are, uh, we're trying to change it, we're trying to understand that it's okay, we need to provide access, we need to invest in that access, in that communications with uh, industry early uh, rather than later. Um, and we, you know, we understand, you know, I've been told uh, that people are choosing not to compete with the Coast Guard just due to the, the process uh, of, of uh, trying to get and trying to engage with the Coast Guard. So we're trying to understand all of that. Uh, and then also as we manage suppliers with a contract that's been awarded, that's another area that we, we need to improve on. And uh, we have a lot of, I think, uh, best practices we're finding that we're going to implement as well in that regard. So again, and this is what we're trying to achieve. We're really trying to uh, to, to really establish ongoing uh, communications and ongoing understanding and build, a, build an organization that's able to do this uh, where we understand what's going on in the workforce. Uh, we've done this at times where we've initiated, we've started these kind of, uh, it's not just an industry day every now and again, you really got to, the organization's got to be integrated and in, in, in all in on understanding, hey, what's out there and what are we trying to achieve? If we're ever going to turn around, like our, our capabilities of, well, our, our spend per KO, for example, if we're ever going to flip that around, we need to have a different way of doing business and we need to find, uh, we need to, uh, you know, we need, we need help to doing it, you know, what's the right what is the right vehicle, or what's the right way to get after this particular issue? Those are all uh, part of what we're trying to achieve. So, uh, and again, this is all really about relationships and supplier management and engagement. And uh, uh, so, we're really interested in your in your thoughts. If you if you're, uh, uh, we have posters and we have uh, a barcode. Is a survey there. Uh, they we're really interested in folks to uh, to come and fill it out and tell us what it's like to do business with the Coast Guard. Tell us what what it should be like, you know, and, and any ideas that you have. And also, uh, we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a focus group, an online focus group. It might be the first, but it'll certainly it might be first of one. It might be we might have more, but that's coming up and. Uh, I think it's April 13th, the date's not there, but if you scan, you can sign up for that and participate as a virtual session and a discussion of all those topics of what it's like to be a, a, a supplier for the Coast Guard. So that's that's my presentation, and uh, yeah, we have time for questions. We have plenty of time for questions, I think. Thank you, Mr. Gibbons. Questions from the audience? Any questions for Mr. Gibbons? All right. Well, thank you very much, sir. We greatly appreciate it. Excellent presentation. Uh, and thank you to everyone who's come out to the Coast Guard booth these past three days and watched our presentations and engaged. Uh, we've really enjoyed having you here. Uh, please keep an eye on our schedule for next year of speakers. We'll be putting that on the website in the springtime. So we hope you come back again and continue to engage with us. Thank you.